I'm Chris Beckham, and I'm the senior warden here at St. Anne's, and uh, although in my job I speak a lot, uh, I do not do a lot in this capacity, so uh, I appreciate you being guinea pigs this morning. Uh, it is stewardship season. I'm going to talk to you a little bit this morning about stewardship. Hold your applause. But uh, <laughs> we will, uh, I'm also, before we do that, I'm going to give you a little insight to my own personal story and to talk a little bit about how St. Anne's has changed my life and, and my family's as well. Uh, I came to Tifton in 1999 to be the editor of the Tifton Gazette, and I was engaged to Stacy at the time, and shortly after uh, we were married, she came to Tifton as well, and we started uh, going to St. Anne's. We, I grew up Catholic, and Stacy grew up Baptist, so Episcopal kind of seemed like a pretty good mix of the two, but actually how we got involved with the Episcopal Church is Stacy became involved with it, uh, the Episcopal Church when she was at Auburn, and so pretty early on, in our relationship, Stacy was pretty adamant that um, when, if we were to start a family and things were to progress, that she wanted our family to grow up in the Episcopal Church. And I said, that was fine. I really didn't care one way or the other. I said, that's fine with me. But when once we began attending Episcopal services, we were living in Valasta at the time, I started to understand why. We wanted to live and raise our family in a church environment where everybody is accepted equally. And that's what we found. There are people in this congregation here this morning who don't like boiled peanuts, who do not think the Andy Griffith show is funny, and they could care less about college football. They don't care that Georgia won 23-17 last night, go dogs. So that means nothing to them. So they are far different than I am, and that's fine. We get along. We love God, and we know God loves us equally. So that's one of the great things we love about St. Anne's and about uh, the Episcopal Church. So we began as church members, like a lot of people do. We, were, we went, we weren't terribly active. Uh, we didn't come every Sunday, but we were members. Um, as I said, I grew up in a small Catholic church in Thomasville. My mother still goes there today. And it was a lot like St. Anne's for a young person in that we didn't have a very large group of young people. And in Thomasville, you got the city kids and the county kids, city school system, county school system. There were probably a half a dozen of us total, and I was the only county kid. All the other ones did. So I kind of, there was a kind of a division, and I remember thinking growing up that as soon as I don't have to go to church anymore, I'm not going to go. And I didn't. When I began to be a teenager in, in the college, I quit going to church. I didn't hate God or have any kind of revelation. I just didn't have a connection. And so whenever we started to have our family, that's something that I said, you know, with our kids... We, I want to do anything I can for them to have that connection. And so, and it all started right there on that altar uh, on April the 16th, 2002. Uh, bishop Henry Loudett was the bishop at the time, and he came and was doing confirmations. And I was being confirmed as a member of St. Anne's. And at the very end, right before it was all over with, uh, my great friend uh, Donna Miller came and tapped me on the shoulder and said, you've got to leave. And I thought, what in the world? And I looked at her and said, What? And if those who remember Donna looked at me with that Donna look and said, you've got to leave. And I thought, well, they've run a background check. And I finally <laughs> caught up with me. But I said, why? She said, because Stacy is going into labor in the back pew. <laughs> and sure enough, so the day I became a member of St. Anne's is one day before Chase was born. It makes it easy to remember that day. So, <laughs> so our kids were raised uh, in this church. And we did what we hoped was right with them along the way, hoping that they would stay engaged and grow older. Uh, like I had not. But we're a small church, and that can be tough. As Chase got older and uh, started hanging out with friends who were going to, you know, larger churches, he started to do activities with them at these larger churches that were much bigger. And I admit I had to start worrying a little bit about, is he going to think of St. Anne's as not as good? Because, you know, we didn't have all the bells and whistles that some of these larger churches had. Unfortunately, it's not the first time that I've underestimated St. Anne's or my own son either. Uh, I didn't plan it to come up in a conversation, but we were talking about something one day, and I said, he was talking about going off with one of his friends in one of these churches, and I said, uh, all right, now you can go off all of all this fun and not like saying it ends anymore. And really without hesitation, he wasn't making a big pronouncement. He just kind of said, you know, that stuff is fun, but St. Anne's is my home. And that meant a lot to me uh, at that time. And it seemed like a revelation to me. It was kind of the cornerstone that I guess I needed to think, okay, I need to be all in 
to do what I, ever I need to do. And it was so good. That really is cool when you do that. I've been wanting to do that for a long time. So I see why you like doing that now. Now, it's a little bit different for Jackson because Jackson likes everything about church. He, he, Jackson would move to Honey Creek tomorrow if I would let him. So it's a little bit different, and I hope that continues as well. Now, listen, I'm not saying all this to uh, say that I'm the perfect father or the perfect Episcopalian or the perfect anything, but it's okay because God forgives my shortcomings. And it's much like the story we heard in today's gospel, um, and I will admit uh, I'm not a theologian, it is kind of a confusing gospel because basically the manager was basically kind of cooking the books on this deal. I mean, he would say, okay, how much do you owe? A hundred? I write down 80. And as the vice president of the Chamber of Commerce, that is a nice sound business practice that I would uh, encourage. But at the end of the gospel today, uh, there is something that makes a lot of sense. And it is, whoever is faithful in very little is faithful also in much. That means to me, if I can trust somebody in a small situation, then... I can probably count on them in an important situation as well, and vice versa. I really believe, truly believe, that our souls not only desire to give, but they crave the opportunity to give. Um, And that's got nothing to do with getting us closer to heaven or anything like that. But I think, uh, you know, we joke at our house, when the news comes on, the, the national news, about the first 15 minutes of it is lots of bad stuff, stuff that we don't want to hear. I've had a long day. I want to hear this stuff, you know. But like the last 10, 50 minutes is the cool stuff. It's the kid that opened the lemonade stand to raise money to help evacuees. It's, it's people who are doing good things in society. So we'll kind of joke, hey, it's 645, let's turn the news on. Let's skip the bad stuff. We want to hear those stories. They reaffirm, I think, our faith. We look for that. And that could helps us or helps me to continue to grow spiritually. As we move toward Consecration Sunday, which will be two weeks from today, I'm going to ask each of you to thoughtfully consider the answer to the question, what percentage of my income is God calling me to give? Now, I'm going to ask you the uh, grow one step sheet that is in your bullets, and I'm going to ask you to pull that out and take a look at that and turn to the stair step side of the bulletin. And there should be pencils available in all the pews if you uh, get those. We're going to fill in some blanks here, uh, starting at the lower left. Now, everybody has a pencil, and I want you to write in these numbers. Again, this is kind of a breakdown from 2018 of our giving. So starting at the lower left, write in the number 43. That's the 43 households in our church in 2018 that were not recorded as contributing to the financial support of the church's ministries in the last 12 months. Now, the next number to write in is the number 15. That is the number of households who contributed from one cent to $4.99 a week, which is about a meal at a fast food restaurant. Next step is fill the number seven. That is for the number of households that contributed $5 to $9.99 a week, about the price of going to the movies. Next, write in the number 20. 20 households that contributed $10 to $19.99 a week, about the price of a haircut, a men's haircut, I believe, maybe not women's. <laughs> next, in the next slot, write in the number 21. That's 21 households that contributed 20 to $29.99, which would maybe feed a family of four at a fast food restaurant. The next number to write in is the number 11. That's 11 households who contributed 30 to 39.99 a week. Next, write in the number 12. 12 households last year who contributed $40 to 49.99 a week. The next number is 16. 16 households who contributed $50 to $74.99 a week. Next is nine households, number nine, that contributed $75 to $99.99 a week. The next number to fill in is 15. 15 households who contributed $100 to $149.99 a week. Two more, the next number is the number six. Six households who contributed $150 to $199.99 a week. And finally, write in the number seven, 
for the number of households who contributed $200 and up per week. Now, I'd like to ask you to turn that sheet over and look at the chart on the back. Now, let your eyes go down the left side of the scale until you come to your approximate salary level. Now, you can move your eyes across to the weekly giving level to God's work through our congregation. And then move your eyes up to the top of the sheet to look at the percentage of your income. Now, during the next two weeks, uh, I think we'll each think about the question of what percentage of my income is God calling me to give? I'm going to now ask the ushers to come forward and distribute the Consecration Sunday reservation cards. Now, on Consecration Sunday, there's going to be a catered meal, which is a gift to our congregation. We hope to have a full house. We're going to give you a few minutes to complete your reservation cards, and then the ushers will come back and pick them up. In closing, I ask that in the next two weeks, we take some time away from the uh, television, from our cell phones, and prayerfully consider the question, what percentage of my income is God calling me to give back? Thank you very much for being faithful members of this church we love so much, and thank you for your time this morning.